I'm going to give you a breakdown of using um, this application called Arc Advanced Resource Arrest Client <clears throat> to interact with the REST API. Some alternatives to this are using the curl command, it's a command line application, or Postman is another graphical um, REST client as an alternative to Arc. Um, I like Arc a little bit more, so I'm going to go through that. Uh, what I have here is I'm going to continue my example of using the uh, to do application. Just to recap, it has two resources as a user, which is really a user's to do list, and it has a to do uh, list item. So you man can manipulate the list uh, by get and post. So get is going to read everything on the user's list. So the, the resource is identified by um, <clears throat> this endpoint. The domain is omitted. I'm using my uh, uh, server on my own machine right now, which is a development machine, so I'll be using localhost. Um, <clears throat> so the first bit of the endpoint is going to be the static string, which is called API. Um, that way, it's the namespace is sort of partitioned. I can use, you know, ha have other um, things hosted in the same domain. Uh, again, this is going to be a um, username, so the colons a giveaway that, that this means this whole thing is basically a variable or a placeholder where we're going to put in a username. So this is saying, okay, let's read a, a particular user's whole to-do list. Post is going to add a to-do list item to that list. Now for the actual list item resource, which is identified by this endpoint. Um, we're just going to put in a particular ID. So each um, each to do list item has a unique ID. Get is going to just retrieve the info for that particular to do list item. Put's going to toggle it between or specify whether the item's completed or not. So that's the only thing we're going to be uh, able to update with this uh, application. And then delete will just will just straight up delete that item. So let's go over here and use Arc. Now this is a Chrome um, application, so you can get it from uh, the Chrome store. Uh, so let's let's go and use this. I'm going to specify post to create a uh, list item for Adam. So that's my user. Um, again, my um, machine is running the server, so that's why I have local host and it's running on port 5000, that's why that's there. I need to add a header. Um, Alright, got something here. So I can put in, let's say, content type and um, JSON. So if you recall, an HTTP request has um, a header which contains a bunch of metadata about the request. So the method type is going to be in there, the URL is going to be in there. There's also a few other fields. So I'm going to specify content type is JSON. So that means the body of the request, the other half, is going to be a bunch of JSON data. So I'm going to go over here. So we can specify the, t uh, the header here. Let's go over to the body. So um, <clears throat> so that's why I have, so you have to make sure it's saying um, application JSON here, raw input. So I'm just going to write, write a JSON string. So um, my API, it when I'm creating a new item, you have to send in just an object. It's going to have a single field text and with whatever I want. So uh, I'm going to say a new, a new to, oh, okay, um, ink and example name. Okay, that's good. Nice and meta. Now I'm going to send it. <clears throat> Method not allowed. Mm. So what I do here, so I'm Depending upon the technology you're using, I'm using Flask behind the scenes. It's really picky if I have that slash on the end there or not. So if you're getting these method not allowed, if you're getting different um, sort of errors like that, um, something's not working where everything else looks fine, check that slash. That's like a pro tip uh, for debugging uh, interacting with REST APIs. So let me send it. Boom. Now I got 200. So when I saw 405, that's a particular kind of error. It's a method not allowed error. So that's an HTTP response code. 200 means success. 
So everything's great. So that means I was able to create that item. So now let me see what Adam has. So I'll change it to get. So I, I use, I basically just use this endpoint with this operation right here. Now I'm going to use the same endpoint but switch it up and use the get request. So change that to here. I can leave the content type. I'm not going to be sending in any body to it because um, it's not part of the API design. So I'll just ask for it. I'm going to toggle the raw response there. So this is the raw string coming back as the body of the response. So when I make a request, remember get is corresponding with read, post is going to correspond with create, put is going to correspond with updating, delete with delete. So um, when I get at this, I'm getting back the whole list of items, like to-do list items Adam has. So we can see the JSON string coming back. It's got these square brackets. That means, okay, this is a list. It's got one item. It's this object it has four fields. This is just the particularities of my application. So <clears throat> the, just the interesting thing is that this is JSON coming back. That's really common in REST APIs. Now, um, my to-do items have an ID. They have a created date. Um, there's a text I sent in and it's set the completed is false. So now I can change it up. I can, let me go back and just make another post um, request. Uh, let's see, let's see. Do uh, an update. So I'll remind myself to do an update example later. So I'm just gonna create a second item. I'm gonna change this up, go back, toggle this back to raw output. So now we can see, okay, I have two, two I just created a second item. <clears throat> and I can see it here. So again, this means there's a list coming back, first object, second object. Uh, you can see the text I sent in. So that's fantastic. Let me show you this, an example of now using the item resource. So again, uh, REST is based around this concept of a resource. It's really, uh, a, a resource is just a generic name for the sort of key sort of players or items that the API is going to be based around. So in this case, I just have my user who has a list that's one resource and the item itself. So now if I switch down here to this to the item resource, again, I'll plug in the username for the user because that colon means it's variable. Colon ID, that means, okay, I'm going to put in the um, 2d list item ID so I can get so if I make a request to this URL I'm gonna see um, <clears throat> everything if I put something on the end like 18 so that's me specifying uh, the use that this resource now that means okay I'm getting back just the item for this uh, particular to do item <clears throat> now um, we can see that's here. Okay, great. Now let's let's uh, move on to. So sometimes you might want instead of giving the whole list every time, you might just want to get a particular item. So that's why that's available. Um, again, that's just API design choice. Now let's go into the put example. So this is an update. So I'm going to use the same URL. I'm going to change the method to put. So post, put, and delete requests are all going to look almost identical. You're just going to change. Uh, the method here get requests you could technically put on you know different parameters here you know, foos is a bar or something like that um, <clears throat> that's never going to be a thing for post put or delete so again we're going to specify something in the body based upon my API design I have um, to update a item the the only thing you can send in is a completed field um, and you can set its value to true or false. I'm gonna send in the string true. Oh my God, I think I need to do capital T true. Send it. I got a successful response. Fantastic. Now if I go back and get this particular value, I can see, hey, completed was set to true. So every time I'm making a request, the, the important thing to think of 
I'm, I'm basically either reading something from the database or sort of updating or creating or deleting something in a database somewhere. And really the REST API is just a nice way of being able to interact with some stored data. So I can see, okay, I updated my to-do list item. Um, I can take that off the end of the URL, send that. Oh, now I get back a whole list. Both of them here, the original first one's still uncompleted. This one's now completed. So now I'm just gonna finish up by uh, showing you a delete request. So again, you just change the method delete here, just put on the end. I'm gonna delete the last one since it's completed, 18. Send the request, okay. Now if I go change this, the get, what will it say? Oh, bad request. That's because it's deleted. So that's how I chose to handle it my API. 400 meaning that's like the generic error code, something bad happened. If you get a 500, that's an internal server error. That means something's really gone wrong. Uh, let's go back and just look at everything Adam has, make a request for this. Oh, 18 is gone. So yep, that's that's using um, ARC, the interact with the REST API. Uh, have a good day.